Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. At the beginning of April, I traveled to England, and while there, I spent a day with one of the best and most respected speaker designers of all time, Lawrence Dickey. Lawrence started his career in the 1980s at Bowers and Wilkins, and while there, he invented various technologies and became really famous for the creation of one of the most iconic speakers of all time, the Nautilus, which was unveiled in 1993. Subsequently, he co-founded Vivid Audio. This is a Vivid Audio Kaya S12 loudspeaker. Now, Lawrence is a wild original thinker, and I wanted to tap into that. So the first thing I did was talk to him about his probably most famous technology, the tapered tube, which you'll see on Vivid speakers and in Bowers and Wilkins speakers. Here's what he had to say. So Lawrence... You're world famous for your tapered tube technology. When does it date back to, and what am I holding here? Right. Um, so tapered tube technology uh, dates back to my time at BMW. And of course, at the time, it was pre-Nautilus. It's what led up to the Nautilus. Because the Nautilus was the first to use it. it. Absolutely, yeah. And what you're holding in your hand there is actually the very first exponentially tapered tube that I ever made. Um, this wooden former was uh, some uh, flooring from a derelict hospital in Brighton. <laughs> and so, oh, really? So, Basic. And anyway, this is the mold. Yeah, well, absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, so to demonstrate how the thing works... I mean, this is a tapered tube? That yeah, right. So similar, it's, similar, it, not exactly. Absolutely. Similar. It's an evolution of, of that original uh, model. The, the crucial thing about the tapered tube, I have to say, is the fact that it's got a, a fibre absorber drawn into it. And you can see here the, the wall poking out the end. And the, the, the point is it starts off low density, but as you get right down to the end, it gets really quite tight. Oh, okay. So it changes the density. Yeah, yeah. The, the variable density is actually a vital part of it, which is in fact the thing that people have uh, missed. Um, so yeah, I can demonstrate. I miss that. I miss that. I actually never thought about that. Oh, uh, no, it's a graduated density. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crucial. Okay. <laughs> to know. Get to know. Yeah. Well, in fact, people have modeled uh, exponentially, exponentially tapered tubes um, you know, using finite element analysis. And the thing that they failed to do is recognize that you have to put the absorber, distributed absorber in the tube. If you just put it as a little bit right at the end, it's nowhere near as effective. You've given away a secret. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow you to edit that. Okay. So demonstrate what this does in terms of loud, a loudspeaker and the driver. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do to demonstrate the way it absorbs sound so uh, totally is first of all, I'm going to speak into this tube, and now you can hear the end to end resonances quite clearly. Uh, if I simply block the end, all that happens is that those resonances change frequency. But they still occur. But they still occur. If I now okay, attach this exponential tape tube, you can hear that the resonances just disappear. You can just hear your voice. You can hear, you know, and, uh, it, if I were to make a rushing noise, you can hear that those resonances just disappear because this thing um, is uh, just a resistive uh, load on the end of the tube. It matches it really effectively. And when, for people who don't know, why do you want the resonances to disappear? Where does right. it go? Okay, this is a demonstration of the, the effectiveness of the exponential tube, but what we actually do, of course, is to put this directly on the back of the driver. Right. And the whole point of uh, an enclosure on the driver is to absorb the sound that comes out of the back, but you have to do so in a way that doesn't introduce its own resonances or reflections. And this exponentially tapered tube does the job really effectively. So it absorbs the rearward output of the diaphragm, and so you only really get the front word. Absolutely. Any ordinary loudspeaker has a front and a back, and the sound that comes from the two sides is exactly identical, but in opposite polarity. Um, we don't want the rear radiation to mix with the front uh, in an uncontrolled way because it would cancel it out. So containing the rear radiation is a secret, and to do so in a way that doesn't introduce resonances is the key, and this is the way we do it. And I know it's been copied by many people. Well... Maybe not exactly, not exactly, but people have <laughs> been inspired by this idea because I, I, I know it works really well. Yeah, and I think the point is that what it did was open people's uh, minds to the, the, the importance of dealing with the rear wave. And, you know, people are using different techniques, um, but a lot of people are cottoning on to the importance of that. That you need to do it. Well, that was educational. Thank <laughs> you very much, Lawrence. Pleasure. So does the taper tube matter? Is it a thing? Of course. It's a really important technology that's still relevant today. It's used in Bowers and Wilkins speakers. Of course, it's used in Vivid Audio speakers. 
and you'll find derivatives of that technology in other company speakers. It matters, but there's more to say about it, and that's coming in the next video. Thank you for watching.